How's it going everyone? Weston here with Go Westy, and today we're going to do a walkthrough on the aftermarket cruise control kit. Before starting the install, be sure to disconnect both the main and auxiliary batteries. Next, you're going to want to remove the glove box, center lower heater shroud, the lower steering column cover, the ashtray, and the instrument cluster. Before installing the cruise module, reference the appendix and the instructions and set the dip switches according to transmission type. This is done by removing the rectangular plug and flipping the switches either using a small screwdriver or a pick. These recommended settings are not perfect and you may need to go back and mess with them later on. So make sure that wherever you decide to mount the cruise module that this hole is not covered up by any objects. There are two mounting locations Go Westy recommends. The first recommended mounted location involves mounting the cruise module parallel to the dash and using the provided self-drilling screws to secure it to the roof of the dash. This method really only works on late model vans as the padding helps conceal the screws. If you decide to go this route, make sure that the cruise module is as far left and touching the heater box as possible, as you will need to get the most slack out of the cable as you possibly can. The second installation method mounts the cruise in the vertical position on the dash support bar located to the left of the glove box. If you do decide to go this route, the cruise control mounting bracket will need to be cut shorter. I usually cut it so one hole is showing and no more. Now mount it either using the provided self-tapping screw or the method shown here which is a little more secure using a nut and a bolt. Whatever mounting location you decide to go with, it is imperative that the cable is routed in a nice smooth manner and unkinked all the way to the acceleration linkage. The cruise control cable should be routed from the cruise control unit under the dash and through the large grommet the heater hoses run through. We recommend poking a hole or drilling a quarter inch hole for easy routing. Once the cruise module is installed, reinstall any of the components previously removed near the cruise module and verify that nothing is contacting the cable or the module itself. Then, if you haven't already, install the wiring harness and run it over to the brake pedal, zip tying the wires up and out of the way where necessary. The black wire with an eyelet, which may sometimes be a fork spade fitting, is the ground wire. Install this on the factory grounding lug just in front of the grommet you fed the cruise cable through. Some vans don't have this lug, and so you can just ground it locally wherever fits best. If you have an automatic transmission, then your kit will only include a brake pedal switch. Most Vanigans have two factory holes drilled above the brake pedal. However, some Vanigans do not, and if this is the case with you, you will have to drill two holes. Align the bracket so that the switch comes in contact with the brake pedal shaft when the brake is in the up position. Attach the bracket using the supplied screws. This bracket may need to be bent up or down slightly with a pair of pliers to fine tune the positioning so that the switch closes only when the brake pedal is in the up position. The goal is to have the switch adjusted so that the moment you touch the pedal you hear an audible click. If you have a manual transmission, the clutch switch will be installed in the same manner as the brake switch. The black two pin connector is for the brake switch. If you have a manual van again, this is for the clutch pedal switch as well. Route this wire to the right of the steering column. The white 4-pin connector and the red 2-pin connector are for the control switch. I like to route these wires up under the instrument cluster near the master cylinder. The female quick disconnect brown and red fuse wires is the system power supply. It goes down near the fuse panel. Pull the fuse panel down to access the rear of it. Then finish routing the female quick connect wire, the brown and red one that are fused, and attach it to fuse panel position either G2 or G5 on late model vans or if you have an early model van at the bottom of fuse 10 at the back of the fuse panel. On this specific van, we use the RF switch. If you went with a dash mounted switch, reference the section at the end of this video showing the install. I like to mount the RF switch control module to the dash support bracket to the right of the master cylinder. The support bracket has a hole and you can easily run a zip tie through that and the control module to mount it securely. Once you have the RF switch module mounted properly, Connect the two pin red connectors to one another and the four pin white connectors into one another and tie these wires up neatly and out of the way. Install the VSS into the back of the speedometer. Your speedometer may have a black plastic tab covering the port for the speed sensor. Simply break this tab off and use the two screws packaged with the speed sensor to mount the speed sensor in this space. Then route the VSS's wiring over to the cruise control wiring. Plug the two three pin green connectors into one another. Then finish reinstalling the instrument cluster, the opposite of how it was removed. You'll notice with the RF switch, there are three Torx bit screws holding the top of the bracket to the switch itself. 
Uninstall these three screws and use the top portion of the switch as a template for drilling the holes in the steering wheel. Then reinstall the backmost torque screw only and use the two longer provided screws with fender washers to mount it to the steering wheel. Check buttons for functionality and make sure that you can hear a clicking sound with both buttons. Next, we go underneath the vehicle. Remove the spare tire and the plastic throttle cover. Move the throttle cover out of the way and uninstall the set screw for the throttle cable. Then, locate the cruise control throttle cable that was pushed through the heater hose grommet previously and route the cable neatly through the grommet and to the throttle linkage. Take your drill and a 7 16 inch drill bit and drill two holes in the throttle cover. One hole will be in the bottom right corner of the rear side. This is where the cruise throttle cable will enter. And the second hole in front of the cover in a straight line forward of the rear hole. The cruise control cable will run through these two holes and pass into the radiator shroud. Locate the threaded P fitting supplied with the kit and thread it onto the threaded end of the cruise control cable sheath. Orientate it so that the flat side will lie against the throttle linkage with the cable running on the inboard side of the linkage. Thread the clamp about one inch onto the cable sheath to start. The goal here is to get a perfect amount of slack, so more than likely this will need to be adjusted later on. Attach the metal eyelet provided to the end of the cruise cable and use the self-tapping screw provided to secure it to the radiator shroud. The adjustment of the P-fitting on the throttle sheath can be kind of tricky, so I like to slot the holes on the throttle linkage cover. This allows me to easily work around the cover, which I find tends to get in the way more often than not. If you notice that the cruise cable is rubbing on either of the holes through the throttle shroud, you'll need to open up the holes ever so slightly. Place the small throttle barrel bolt removed earlier through the hole in the threaded P-fitting and reinstall the bolt into the barrel which holds the Vanagon throttle cable so that the throttle cable is adjusted taut. The threaded P-fitting will need to be adjusted so that there is about an eighth inch of slack in the cruise cable, so this step may need to be repeated several times. What's shown here is a good visualization of the amount of slack that is required. Once everything is installed correctly, reinstall all components previously removed and take vehicle out for a test drive to verify that it is not surging and driving properly. Further adjustment of the threaded P-fitting and or the dip switches may be required. If you opted for the dash mounted switch, simply remove the blanking plate located beneath the hazard and defroster switch. Once the plate is removed, run the wires from your dash mounted switch through the rectangular hole in the instrument cluster. Continue pulling the wires through until that the two pins from the cruise mounted switch come into contact with the rectangular hole. The two pins on the switch should hold it to the cluster just fine. However, if you desire a tighter fit, simply use some epoxy or some double sided sticky tape and put it between where the switch mates up to the instrument cluster. Then follow this up by pushing the two four pin connectors into one another and the two two pin connectors into one another. Then tie up the wires out of the way. If you had factory cruise control and desire to use the factory switch, follow this wiring diagram and cut the wires and splice them to one another according to color. If you decide to go this route, it's important to verify that your switch is working properly beforehand. There is a procedure in the Bentley manual that goes over this step by step. Well there you have it. Fine tuning the system might be a little tedious, but in the end, you'll end up with a much more enjoyable ride. Until next time, safe travels.